That video stream's coming up. We'll be rolling here in just a few minutes. I got that. The Facebook is now live. Got that and starting a timer for you guys. We'll be starting in five minutes. Let me move my chair out of the way here. Appreciate y'all for jumping on here a little bit early. Let me head over, let's check out some chats, see what's happening as well as we kind of get, uh, uh, get ready here. Let me pop out the chat. So I can see all of that and we'll be ready. Let me get this pulled up for Facebook. Mock check ride tonight, it's gonna be really, really good. I'll be asking you actual FAA check ride questions. So it should be really, really good here. Let me pull up, I'm trying to get the comments pulled up here for M0A and on, I'm sorry, on Facebook. Let's see, M0A is live now. Let's see what everybody's saying. Hey, Aaron, hey, Mike, hey, Nick, Jim. Jim says he'll be good, he promises. I don't know about that, Jim. Uh, I don't know, let me go ahead and uh, make this big, there we go. So we can see, <laughs> good, to, uh, good to see you. Hey, uh, Dave, uh, David Ennis, good to see you as well. Let's head over to, uh, oops, I have to keep, let me pop out this chat for, uh, oh, it keeps opening as a new tab, that's part of the problem. Let's head over to YouTube, see what's happening over there as well. Jason Crockett, Thomas, Akush, uh, good to see you all. Let me adjust this so I can see both of those simultaneously. There we go. Oh, I got that pulled up on the other screen. Mock check ride coming up here soon. Excited to just really share with you. This is something we do with our ground school members uh, every Monday night. It's something we get to do special. We start in here in just about three minutes. So uh, excited. If you are on, uh, by the way, Matt, Landon, David, Chris, uh, good to see you all. Uh, Edward, good to see you all. If you're on Facebook, you see in the comments, it just said get notifications when M0 goes live. Be sure you turn that on so you get those alerts each and every time we're live. On YouTube, Caesar, Michael, Robbie. Hey, Joseph, good to see you. Joseph, one of our online ground school lifetime members. Joseph, really appreciate you uh, coming on here as well. Hey, Robbie. Hey, uh, Raul, good to see you. Username Guest Aviation, good to see you on here. Michael Clark, Mark Steffen, good to see you. Two minutes and we're gonna get rolling. It's gonna be really neat. Um, I'm gonna be asking actual FAA uh, check ride questions, five of them to be specific. So it'll be really great. And then you're gonna work to kind of formulate your best answer. So I'll be sharing that here. Again, just kind of, I'm, I'm starting the stream a little bit early, just to give everybody a fair chance to, uh, to kind of hop on uh, as well. So it's gonna be really, really great. I've got both comments for YouTube and uh, Facebook up as well, so I can uh, I can see all of that. So really, really great. Looks like we have over 100 on each YouTube and Facebook. So really great turnout so far, early even. So I appreciate that. You'll see some of the great M0A.com team in there as well. So thank you for uh, that. Let's see some more comments. Hey, Keith Young. Hey, uh, Jason. There's Hunter Stonehouse. Hunter's one of the great M0A.com team members here. Oh, old Bob Cam. Bob Cam, if you ever have any air traffic control questions, that's your guy. Hey, Clay, good to see you on here. Uh, Fred. Hey, Fred, good to see you. Fred's from Pro Pro Propellerhead Aviation. Great little outfit just south of us here. Um, Awesome, Robert, good to see you. Let's head over to YouTube now. Lyle, Terrence, Brian, Andrew, Jason Crow, good to see you, thanks for hopping on. Uh, David Broskow, uh, thank you for the kind words, my friend. Miguel Counts, good to see you all. Down to a minute, we're gonna get started. Just kinda taking a time, some moment to, to say hi. Thanks whoever sent me this mug. Someone made me this mug, by the way. Flight train radios over there and coffee break flight instructions. Two shows I should probably bring back. So maybe that mug, I appreciate that. Um, all right, Eli, Michael, Look at that, Shane, <laughs> good to see you. Shane, I'm trying to clean up my act. Uh, good to see you on here, Shane. Hope you had a great new year. Uh, good evening to you, Michael. Hey, Leanne, pleasure to see you. Stan, good to see you. Stan in Boise, Idaho, he said. 40 seconds and we'll get, uh, we'll get started and rolling here. Perry George, great to see you. Ernest, Jason Crockett, good to see you. Uh, thanks for hopping on. Nathan, Peter, uh, Ernest in Ocala, Florida. 
Ernest, can you come to hang out in the studio? Absolutely. Mike uh, on Facebook, Charlie Howe in Lakeland. Charlie, I'll see you at Sun and Fun. David in Bartow, see you at Sun and Fun. Chris in Jacksonville, sure for sure see you at Sun and Fun. Let's see, Bob Cam, how do we get an ATC Sun and Fun shirt on the set? Bob, if you send me a Sun and Fun ATC shirt, I will feature that proud. I may even wear it. Um, that, that's impressive. The timer has ticked down. I guess it's time to get started. I got to go into Jason Shepard mode though here for a second, and then we'll go ahead and uh, <laughs> go ahead and get started here. So, got to mentally prepare for that, right? Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here. So excited to have you all on the mock check ride tonight. Live streaming on Facebook, live streaming on YouTube. I have the chat up in front of me so I can see all of that. In fact, um, on Facebook, when you hit likes and hearts and all that stuff, I can see that stream across the screen. I can see the comments as well. Rodney McKnight Jr., good to see you as well. Send me an email or text sometime, my friend. Good to see you uh, as well over on YouTube. Live mock check ride tonight. I'm I'm asking you five actual FAA check ride questions. This is something we do every Monday night with our online ground school members. All present on a topic, bring it to them live in a much smaller environment, obviously, and we work to provide the best answers. So again, let's give a few shout outs here on Facebook. Hey, Lynn Kaywood, good to see you. Harris, uh, Kristen, good to see you. I know Carter's watching uh, as well. Dave, John, Art, Brian, Cameron, Mike, Michael. Let's head over to YouTube now. Jeff, Bruce, Anthony, Hunter Richmond, Rick Green. Good to see you. Uh, JB, good to see you. Username The Plain Geek. Good to see you as well. Darren Smith, Todd. Awesome. Welcome to M0A.com World Headquarters. We're live in the M0A.com studio tonight and bringing to you a great mock check ride. How this works is I'm going to present and I'm going to ask you five actual FAA check ride questions. And this is everything from the private pilot level up to the CFI level. And how I want you to approach this is I want you to answer the questions at the level that you're testing for. If I ask a question, tell me about hypoxia. I want you to type in the answer as to what level you are. If you're working for a private pilot, answer that at the private pilot level. But if you're working towards your CFI or your commercial, we're going to get a dissertation on hypoxia, right, what it really is. Now, we're going to ask anything that general or that broad, but I'm going to ask these questions, and you're going to type in your best answers. Now, I have, again, the Facebook chat up here as well as the YouTube chat. So when I kind of break eye contact with you, I'm looking down. I'm looking down to say hi to people like Jim and David and John and Sean, uh, Forrest Johnson, good to see you, Jeff Holiday, good to see you in a Nebraska. My buddy Alex uh, in uh, uh, Atlanta, good to see you. Makes all our Atlanta seminars along with Clay. I saw him earlier. Um, Alan Lopez, hi to you on Facebook. James Fellows, great, great uh, uh, friend of ours and friend of M0A.com. So I'm um, reaching down at the chat uh, with that. This is being recorded too, so maybe it's getting late for you. You got to put the kids down, whatever it may be. You can come back in the morning. This will be on Facebook, on YouTube when you wake up. You can listen to the rest of it on the commute into work, so don't you worry. But I'm going to ask the actual questions. I'm going to do my best to be quiet. And if you watch an M0A.com video, you know how my wife feels all the time. I never stop talking, right? So I'm going to ask a question, do my best to be quiet, and let you work to provide your best answer at the level you're working towards. So let's go ahead and let's get started here with mock check ride question number one. What is the critical angle of attack and why is it so important to know? What is essentially critical angle of attack? Again, give it to me at the private, the instrument, the commercial, the CFI level. That's what I'm asking here. What is critical angle of attack and why is it so important to know? That is what I'm really after here. Let's go ahead and let's read some questions here. Um, Joel Davis. Absolutely. I would certainly work on a check ride. Jonathan Hubbard. Absolutely. Could somebody, uh, somebody did, Leo did, give me a definition. We can talk about, you know, the S word, we'll call it for now. I don't want to reveal everything. 
Could I get an FAA definition as to what the, it's the difference between two lines. What's the, what is define angle of attack and then tell me what it does. We could, if you want to take it a, a step, uh, a step forward. Uh, Leo did that over on Facebook. John, great answer on Facebook here. Um, let's see, let's see. Heather, good to see you just joined on here as well. Another uh, friend of Shane's. Let's see, Alan. Um, Alan Lopez on Facebook, great answer here. Heading over to YouTube. Yeah, Josh on YouTube, Rick Green on YouTube, good answers. Todd, yeah, Todd, I like that answer here. We're getting onto some good stuff here. We can be, some of us, we need to be a little more descriptive with stuff. I saw some of you that just said, oh, it causes a loss of lift. Well, yeah, in a nutshell, but if I answer a question and just say it, it's a loss of lift, the next thing the checkride examiner is going to say is why. And you need more detail, even, again, even at the private pot level, just saying it, it, it's a loss of, that, that's just not detailed enough. They're going to dig deeper in that case. So what is the critical angle of attack and why is it important to know? Here is our answer to number one. And this is answering it from a private to a CFI level here. Take it for what it's worth for you. The actual definition, it's the angle between the cord line and essentially our flight path. The difference between the angle of our cord line and the flight path. Now, this is a rough number here, but when that angle is greater than roughly 18 to 20 degrees, the air separates from the wing. And this is where, for those who said it causes a loss of lift, yes, this is where the wing loses, shall we say, lift. The wing stalls, essentially. Now, this is something I don't care if you're at the private or you're at the CFI level. You have to understand the second to last bullet point. This can happen in any airplane configuration. Climb, descent, straight and level. Climbing, descending turns. This can happen in any of those configurations. So I really want you to be mindful of that. Allow me to kind of give you some examples here. Let's, let's take 2-3 Mike Zulu. We got an exact replica of 2-3 Mike Zulu down to the antennas. Pretty cool, huh? So think of it. Okay, so we're talking about the wing reaching its critical angle of attack, 18 to 20 degrees. We always, you know, we, we think of it just as a stall. The wing stops flying, great, and we go ahead and recover. But have you ever thought about, we talk about it can happen in any configuration here. So have you thought about commercial pilot guys and gals know this as an accelerated stall, where I can be in a turn, where I'm now producing a horizontal and a vertical component of lift. Remember, I have both of those. And one is being produced more than the other and unevenly on each wing. And as I pull some G loading through that turn, I can cause what's called an accelerated stall. You could say, Jason, your nose is slicing across the horizon like a steep turn. Have you ever been in a steep turn and you pulled back a little bit too much? You hit some turbulence and the stall warning horn chirped and you think, gosh, I thought the stall warning horn only happened when my nose was up here. You have to understand, the critical angle of attack can be reached in any configuration. You could reach the critical angle of attack in a descent. It's certainly a little more difficult, but it could certainly happen based on load factor, based on the loading of our actual aircraft. Now, take a look at this image here. Again, FAA image, I apologize, but it's what we get to work with. Where we understand when the air separates, right? Follow my cursor, my cursor on the left side of your screen here. Again, air flows nicely over our cambered wing. Remember, our wing has a camber to it, right? Flows over nicely, low angle of attack. We increase that flight path, that relative wind, right, to our, to our cord line here. And we get, ooh, it's working a little harder as we increase the angle of attack. Then when we get an excessive angle of attack, the, the air can no longer stay attached over the top and it eddies off. This is, when you feel buffeting, you are literally feeling this right here. This is what a buffet actually is. You know what I mean when I say a buffet? When we're, when we're flying along and you can literally feel the airplane kind of start to shake and the next thing what happens is it stalls, right? Or you hear your instructor say, there's the buffet. And you're like, what is a buffet, right? That's what's literally happening. The, the air is eddying over the top of it. That's a buffet. And then we proceed to stall. A little bit of a maybe more detail than needed on angle of attack. But again, I need to help you from a private all the way to a CFI level. We have a lot of people on this presentation tonight. So 
Absolutely here. Let's keep moving forward here. Question number two. When is carburetor heat necessary to use and how does it work in the airplane? When is carburetor heat necessary to use and how does it work in the airplane? You know, it's, it's ironic that we picked like the coldest day of the year. I feel like all of the United States is freezing with maybe the exception of Hawaii and Key West right now is freezing, uh, but we're cold here. It's supposed to be 27 tomorrow in o Ocala in Florida where I'm at, so it's cold. But we use carb heat, carburetor heat, summertime doesn't matter. But when is it necessary and how does it work in the airplane here? Okay, a lot of you are giving me when it's necessary. Josh, it's great. SGV Real Estate's the username, it's great. Randy Steven, sure. John Hubbard, good to see you. Yo, I John, I love how you went into the numbers. That's so valuable. Heading over to Facebook, Gene, Samuel, great. All, all valid stuff here. Um, uh, Alex, I saw your comment for a second and I got buried, but you were right. Uh, with that, Alex in Atlanta, you were right. Um, how does it work? What's actually happening? Let's take it a step further. Who wants to answer the question of what is a consideration when using the carburetor heat? Is there, is there a drawback to using carburetor heat perhaps? Is there a, maybe a certain, eh, I, don't wanna, I can't lead you, I don't wanna lead you, but let's just, let me ask you, is there a drawback to carburetor heat? Let's, let's start with that and see where that takes us here. Eli, a good answer here. Uh, the drawback, Jason Crow, but I wouldn't expect anything less from you. Uh, Jason Crow has been a long, long time uh, uh, fan and customer of ours. Jason, really appreciate that. Um, username, uh, Mr. Patriot 71 you're exactly right. Heading over to Facebook. Um, yeah, Alan, it does do that. Clay, that's exactly the answer I was looking for. Great work, great work. Let's see here. Um, just trying to, they're all coming in so fast. I apologize. And the, um, yeah. I mean, so, yeah, some of you are, you're pretty close to this. When is carb heat necessary to use, but how does it work? That's a big thing. That's a really, really big, big thing here. Um, Think about the weather that we're having in the United States right now. Obviously, it plays a big, big role in here. Let's go ahead, let's reveal this answer now. Answer number two. Let's just go with the obvious. When carburetor ice builds up in the carburetor, it can happen at any time or any weather when there's a significant amount of humidity in the air. It most often happens. This is gonna sound crazy to you, but I promise you, Anyone here that's experienced carb ice, and we have a lot of people on here, I guarantee somebody has, most often happens in the late summer, early fall, due to the high humidity. Now, let's stop there for a second. First off, who on here, you can just type in me if this applies to you, has ever experienced carburetor icing? Let's start with that. I've, I've experienced it twice, actually. Uh, once was in the wintertime, once was in the late summertime. Uh, one, the first one actually led to a, a temporary engine failure in flight. Uh, and the next one uh, actually happened on the ground. And I remember, I'll start with the one on the ground. I was, uh, we were taxing out, I was in 512 Romeo and went to do a run up and we're just trying to give it the 1800 RPMs at once for run up. And it just, something wasn't right. What We weren't getting the power. It was hiccuping, it was struggling. The engine was just working so hard. And we go and turn the carburetor heat on as a part of our check and it just like magic, brings the engine back to life. Like, we just picked up carb ice on the ground. Of all the places I'd want to pick up carb ice, that, that's a great place to pick it up. Uh, the other time is I remember I was flying into or trying to get into the New Bedford Airport it, well, in Massachusetts. I did a year up at uh, Bridgewater State College in Massachusetts. It was State College at the time, now it's university. And I, I, we were flying in, and I, we were in a Cessna 172, 150. I have to look at my logbook and see. And I remember it was... It was snowing, it was nighttime, it was one of my 
you know, scarier moments in actual. I remember be, being from Florida and you have the, all the lights on, the snow is rushing by, it is dark, it is IFR with the clouds, it is not fun. We were picking up ice for a bit, it's better now. We're trying to come in. So we, we come on in, in the first time, go miss, don't see anything. We try the second time, go miss. Really, we get to the third time. This is my third time trying this approach. And I remember my instructor saying to me, like, Jason, it's, um, you know, we're, we're going to have to, we're going to be going somewhere else here real soon or declaring an emergency. I'm thinking, this is, I was working on my commercial at the time. And I remember we're going, he goes, you just focus on the instruments, I'll let you know if I see lights. And we're coming on in, and I'm calling them out to we're going there, and I get just about 100 feet from minimum, and so all of a sudden he goes, I see the runway. And I take the throttle, and I just pull it right back to idle, because I was so excited. We see the runway, let's get this thing down the ground. I pull the throttle back to idle. I kid you not, the engine just goes like this. It just goes, and it like stopped in front of us. And my instructor just goes, carb heat. And we grab the carb heat. Engine obviously magically comes back to life, and so it seems, and we land, and I'll never uh, uh, forget that. Uh, again, carb ice, nothing to mess around. Let's go back to our little lesson here uh, on this last bullet point. Now the Venturi. So we actually have a Venturi inside of the carburetor. The Venturi effect causes a quick cooling effect and the humidity goes from a gas to a solid. This is why you don't necessarily need freezing temperatures to pick up carburetor icing because we've created a Venturi. I don't really know if I don't have a Venturi here on the set, but you can picture a Venturi, right? Picture a river and the canyon takes the river and brings it together, right? What happens, everything has to speed up. So when we take, let's just call it cool, humid air, and it was out here, and then we speed it up. What is speeding the air up through a Venturi gonna do? It's gonna cool it further, right? You're gonna ice in that Venturi, right where your throttle plate is sitting. So you have to realize, going back to our slides here, there's a box that the carburetor you know, sits and has two flaps. One lets in filtered air, the one lets in hot, unfiltered air. For those of you who ask what is a drawback of the carburetor heat, it's the unfiltered air from the manifold. So hot air will cause, also for those that a decrease in performance, it's gonna cause a drop in engine RPM. Now if ice is present, as indicated by a drop in RPMs, then the flap of filter air closes. When you pull out the carb heat, it opens up the unfiltered air flap. Now, you don't wanna close this before all the ice is on. Get rid of all that ice. And you know what? You picked it up once, you're gonna be checking about every six minutes, you're gonna be turning that thing on again as well here. I have a nice little diagram to kind of show you here as to what it really looks like. Follow along here with my cursor again. There's my cursor on the left side of your screen. Carburetor's over here in the middle of your screen. Where does the hot air come from? The engine exhaust, literally. So now, here's your bonus question. What is, a, what, what's another possible issue? If I'm, I'm running here, you know, it's coming over the engine exhaust, it's coming into my fuel system here. Have you ever thought about, it's unfiltered. What if I was doing a soft field landing? I talk about this, I have an upcoming soft field takeoff and landing video that'll be coming out in a few weeks. I've known a soft field landing, we've all touched down, if you had touched down on a soft field, you hit, and it's dry, we stir up all that dust, all that grass. Well, if I have the carburetor heat on, which I typically do landing, that's unfiltered air, all that dirt, all that grass I just spun up could be coming into my fuel system, and I'm giving it an easy way into my fuel system. You have to be careful of that. I guarantee, I know Russ, there's a lot of other mechanics on here, AMP mechanics are gonna tell you, they pulled some junk out of carburetors before because of people neglecting these sort of things. So that's just something else to really watch, monitor, and think about, especially when you do have the opportunity to make soft field landings here. Let's go ahead now, and let's kind of look at our next question here. Question number three, give me the definition. G give me what this acronym stands for. What is CFIT? What does the acronym stand for of CFIT? And then tell me what it is if you really know. What is CFIT? Tell me what CFIT is. Zed, Ben, absolutely. Username below, minimums, absolutely. Roscow, yes. Dakota, great here. On Facebook now, Sam, Don, now we're getting on to something. Dwayne, yes, absolutely. Back over to YouTube. Michael, yes, Jonathan, Hunter, Paul, Ben, uh, Ben uh, uh, over on YouTube. Is that, isn't that the truth? Intentional or unintentional, right? Jeez. Let's see, Nathan Kennedy, Todd, 
uh, Matt, Matthew, James, Britt, Waters, yes. Greg, yes, what is CFIT? So many of you know it, I love it. I absolutely love it here. What is CFIT? Thank you, Matt Russell. Thank you, Forrest Johnson. Uh, Jim Davis, no need to put a question mark at the end of that, man, you got that right. No need to, no need to wonder here. Russell, great. Alan Lopez, great. Can somebody define it? Can somebody explain to me what, okay, you told me, everyone here shared, it's controlled flight into terrain. Awesome. What is it? I mean, what is the actual definition of CFIT? And you could say, Jason, it's controlled flight into terrain, but literally there's an actual FAA definition you should be able to say, and this goes for any level, private, or certainly all the way to CFI. Absolutely here. All right, Alan Lopez, that certainly causes it. Um, um, Arnaldo, yes, this is, yes. Uh, Jimmy Prescott, yeah, that, uh, that, that does. Um, Shane, that'll do it, right? Controlled flight into terrain. All right, uh, I love Matt Russell's answer. I'm going to read Matt Russell's answer. Let me slow down some of these. A perfectly airworthy airplane being flown into terrain could be caused by poor uh, or low visibility, poor navigation. Answer number three is on your screen. CFIT, controlled flight into terrain. It's something that they are, the FAA is really cracking down on. Literally, that's why I love the answer I just read. An airworthy aircraft is accidentally flown into terrain, water, or an obstacle. It's terrain, right? So, again, I always say, a perfectly good airplane was flown into terrain. Now, it's usually noticed too late before anything can be done. We'll have to change the outcome. Usually due to deteriorating weather conditions like rain, fog, lowering ceilings. The pilot attempts to maintain a visual at the ground, becomes unaware of the surroundings. Now... Now, don't let Bob Cam see this one. Bob Cam's our resident controller here. But listen, this could also be, a, you know, a controller issue as well. Maybe it's not uh, giving proper vectors, no vectors, uh, the airplane not following what's on the approach plate. Uh, whatever it may be may lead to obstacles, terrain. CFIT, controlled flight into terrain. Isn't it unfortunate that something like that even has a name? You think, how often could that happen? I remember thinking... You know, when I was a private pilot, when I was an instrument pilot, I was learning to fly, I, I specifically remember thinking like, CFIT, how does that happen? How could somebody fly a perfectly good airplane into the side of a hill, a mountain, into the water? How does CFIT really happen? And then when I became a CFI, I was CFII, I did a thing called Flying Across America. I took my Cessna 150 from Daytona Beach to Catalina Island, California and back. And I specifically remember, we got to about Palm Springs, California, and I, it was my first introduction to like the West, the West Coast, kind of like this California smog that they get so often. And I remember, there's all these mountains. Here I am, this guy from Florida, and I'm flying through all this smog, and it was VFR, but I specifically, in that moment, remember thinking to myself, this is how CFIT happens. I, I totally get it now. You're flying along and you just think, oh, it'll get better. I'm almost there. The smog's kind of bad. The fog's kind of bad. The mist is kind of bad, but I'm almost there. And you literally fly into the side of a mountain and it's just too late. You say, how with G1000, how with iPad technology, how is this even possible? Yet it continues to happen. It happens more, Jason Murphy said it best on Facebook, it happens more than people realize. You look up the AOPA of the NTSB database, there is, when it searches categories for accidents, there literally is a column just called CFIT. Let's stick with this acronym theme. This should be an easy one. Let's, let's throw a softball out there. What is an ELT? You can just tell me what that stands for. You can also tell me what it does. You wanna take a step further, you can tell me what are some inspections required with this thing? How do, you wanna, how do you wanna take this? You answer this question based on the level of training you're at, private, instrument, commercial, CFI. You tell me here. Beautiful answers. 
Jeremiah, Ben, Michael, Steve, Tyler, another Michael, uh, Hunter, Jared, Paul, these are all on YouTube, Michael, Brennan, Nathan, uh, Benjamin, Pierce, yes, let's head over to uh, Facebook. Daniel, Dwayne, Todd, Harrison, Derek, Mike, Clay, Nick Simmer, Don Morrow. Nick Simmer, I really like your answer. My old buddy, my old buddy Bob Cam. I like it. Let's see what Bob says. Again, read on Facebook, read Bob Cam's comment. Bob is our resident controller. Very, very smart, smart guy. David, again, very great to see you, David. Oh, David, you bring up a really good point. Frequencies. Okay, David, I, I share this. I share this because I love you. You know, I love you as a brother, man. So think of this. Think what you just brought up. This David on Facebook uh, in Texas. I'm not picking on you, David. I'm only picking on you because I love you like a brother. Let's see. David comes to all our aviation seminars at sea. If there's a M0A event in Texas or anywhere, David shows up at it. He says, it's the emergency low care transmitter. Correct. On 121.5. Remember, we just made, when I say just, it's been a while since we made that switch. Now we have 406 megahertz. There's still 121.5s that are out there. What I'm saying, and I use that as an example, David, because we just opened up a can of worms. And they're going to go, yeah, you're right. There's 121.5 ELTs. What's the other type of ELT? And we're all going to go, uh, it, there's a new ELT? And they're going to go, yeah, you should know about it. It was, a, it was a big switch, 121.5 is no longer monitored. Do you see how we can open up a can of worms? And David, I, I appreciate you letting me use you, even though I just used you without your permission, I guess. But I appreciate it, my friend, because that's how we dig ourselves into a checkride pitfall, is what I'm getting at. We want to give, just look at the question again here. Can we put the question back up on the screen? The question is, what is an ELT? You could just as simply said, it's an emergency locator transmitter. Literally, that's what the question says. The checkride examiner could then say, okay, what does it do? Well, it's kind of like, uh, like an EPIRB is what it does essentially. And if it impacts, you know, if there's a hard impact, if it impacts water, it's gonna send a distress signal so people can come out and find me. Okay, what? and then maybe they'll bring up, what frequency does it transmit? What does it do, right? Do you see how we can take this however we need to. We don't want to dig ourselves into a checkride pitfall. Let's do some ELT facts real quick here for answer number four. Like we said, ELT, emergency locator transmitter. The FAA requires on all aircraft to have on board. It emits an audio and radio signal on various radio frequencies once it experiences a certain amount of G-forces. Can be activated with a switch, low battery, or hard landings as well been known to set off ELTs. Here you go, here's where we talk about 121.5, can be heard on 121.5, and can be tested only for the first five minutes after each hour for three sweeps, three passes of the ELT siren. If you ever heard one, it is a horrendous sound. However, what happened, is it safe to say a year ago, it's maybe been over a year ago, 121.5 is no longer, you know, monitored. Now, every airliner still monitors, everyone else is still monitoring it, but we have new ELTs now. Right, transmit on a new frequency that's just better range, easier to find, easier to locate. So we kind of have the civil, and my civil air patrol guys and gals all know this, we still track both. Both are still monitored here. Both are still responded to. But just be mindful that 121.5 is dying technology, is how we also want to uh, apply approach it and kind of see. Uh, someone brought up a great comment on Facebook too. Might be a good idea to listen to 121.5 uh, on your handheld real quick after shutdown if you have a 121.5 ELT. Very, very good point here. Awesome. Make sure you test that. Make sure you hear that sound. That is a very, if you ever heard ELT sound, that is a very, very uh, scary kind of sound uh, to hear most definitely. So do make sure you, uh, you know that. Let's move to the fifth. And final question here. You ready for this? You're gonna to need to see this one. This one's very tough. What kind of airspace is this? Are you ready? Here's your sectional chart. Here's your arrow. What kind of airspace, oops, wrong cursor. What kind of airspace is this? What on earth is this? I'm taking a step further here. 
because this is one and the same thing. I'll draw another arrow. What about this? It's essentially the same thing. I got this, this thing, and I got this thing. Telling me kind of essentially the same thing here. What kind of airspace is this? Gretchen, uh, good to see you. Um, Bill Stull, you're exactly right. Um, Jonathan Hubbard, your correct answer. Joseph Aids, I wouldn't expect anything but the best. I only have two or three correct answers right now. I don't have, I have Chase West on Facebook. He's my only correct answer on Facebook. Oh, um, yep. Uh, along with 09 Fox Shots, the username, that's correct. Um, Minia on YouTube, that's correct. This is a tough one. Don't let it, look closely. Turn your monitor brightness up. Look, compare, compare this to this. Are these the same color? Right? Make sure you're looking at this right here. Todd on YouTube, Shimano02 on YouTube. Yes, some more correct answers. Russell on, on Facebook, yes. Some more correct, Zach, there you go, you're all right. Again, aren't you so thankful we're going over this here with us for free before you go and spend five, six, seven hundred bucks on a check drive and they sit down and go, what is this? And you go, oh, it's class E. And they're gonna go, look a little bit closer, right? Because so many of us, I'd say about 90% of you instantly just jumped to, oh, class E. This isn't something that's shown a whole lot. This is something you really, really have to dig for. And like Alex said on Facebook, check the legend. I had to gotta look at the legend sometimes. You're right. You gotta dig a little bit deeper. What kind of airspace is this? For those of you who said class echo, I am sorry, that is not correct. This over here, I'm on the right side of my screen. This is a class echo transition area. It's faded magenta. But what's faded blue? What's a blue zipper line with an altitude here? This is class golf, class G airspace. And this is, you know, this doesn't happen very much here. The actual blue zipper line like you show will show you the actual altitudes. But that's class G airspace starting other than typically indicated, right? We know we have, where does Echo typically start? 700, 1200, it doesn't start anywhere else. But what about special class G airspace? Sometimes you'll get into it with some, just the airspace around it, the elevation around it, the terrain features, the obstacle around it. Class G airspace, that's a tough one. You're not gonna find that on many sectional charts. We actually had to dig pretty hard to actually find that. Uh, but class G airspace as shown there. So hopefully you learned something with that. But uh, again, five actual FAA check ride questions. Let me ask you a question, how did you do? Listen, if you got five out of five, you should be feeling pretty good about yourself moving forward with your check ride. If not, maybe say, man, I got all of them, but that sectional chart question. Maybe you just take some time and look at the legend and let's go find some of the tough things. What are some things that you don't recognize? Let's try to find them on that sectional chart. Let's find a way to challenge yourself in aviation. And again, aren't you glad the things you didn't know, maybe you didn't know what CFIT was. Aren't you glad you learned it here tonight than when you just spent five, six, seven hundred dollars and you're sitting in front of a check ride examiner and he or she's asking all these questions, you're going, I don't know. You only get so many freebies on a check ride, right? So just, just be thinking about that. Listen, if you absolutely love this, I want to encourage you to check out our number one rated online ground school, groundschoolacademy.com. Every Monday night, I do a webinar just like this with our online ground school members. It's a mock check ride. It's a weekly workshop. You're here live with me. It's obvious we have a couple hundred people on Facebook, a couple hundred people on YouTube. It's a much smaller environment. Um, and we're able to kind of hang out and do that on, in addition to all our great products. Also, this month, ending up to January 31st, I'm giving away all of my books for free.
Pass your private pilot check ride, pass your instrument pilot check ride, a draft of my new book, pass your commercial pilot check ride, in flight emergencies book plus the course, farm and plain English, the secret of perfect lanes, aviation acronyms. There's so many other books I'm giving away for free as a bonus to you for signing up. Anything from a PIC, a Pilot Center Circle member, which is someone who just wants the webinars and works to stay proficient for 27 bucks a month, all the way up to our gold level membership. And I know Joe's fun. There's so many members are on here. Alex is on here. If, uh, if you guys don't mind just giving a quick little shout out of how much you love the course, uh, we have so many just uh, amazing members that are such a blessing to myself and this M0A.com team here. Inside the online ground school, our gold members get, like I said, the webinars every Monday night. It's knowledge test prep plus the boot camp. I'll explain that in a second. It's check ride prep. But most importantly, we set out to make you that safe real world pilot. We have the pass your test guarantee. Pass your knowledge test or I'll pay for it. Pass your check ride or I'll pay for it. No one else offers that kind of guarantee. If you fail your check ride on your oral exam, I'll pay for your check ride. No one, no other course is gonna write you a five, six, seven hundred dollar check. Um, because you failed your check ride. That's just something we do because we're so confident in our course. Plus, you're gonna get all my books for free as well. The Knowledge Test Prep Bootcamp is 12 additional videos geared specifically just towards helping you with the knowledge test. We teach beyond the checklist, beyond any tests. We make you a safe real world pilot. If you love my teaching style, you're gonna love the online ground school. You're gonna love those videos. You're gonna love the book. So the URL again is there on your screen, groundschoolacademy.com. Become a member at any level, any level, and you'll get all of those books for free. As soon as you sign up, you'll be able to download all those. It's month to month, there's no contract. Honestly, just being real with you, if you just wanna get the books for free, you could just hop in there, grab the books, enjoy it for a month, and just cancel. I'm just being real with you. We are, we are here to deliver value. We're here to create safer, smarter pilots. And I hope that comes across in each and everything that we do. So let's open this up now for some questions. Any questions you all have, anything aviation related, I am more than happy to chat with you all now. By the way, Jim, thank you for your membership. Floyd, uh, Forrest, Harrison, Roy, Greg, thank you so much. Appreciate, uh, appreciate you guys over there. Um, Let's see, let's see, anything, um, uh, username, uh, Aviator for Life, thank you for that, I appreciate it. Any questions, listen, I know some of you have to go, if you have to head out, that's fine. If you have any question that is aviation related, I I'm here for you, I'm more than happy to chat about it. Let's just take a few minutes, let's answer some questions. If you are just have questions about getting started, you have questions about a check ride, questions about buying an airplane, we are here for you. Please don't hesitate to reach out. Please also make sure you subscribe to us on Facebook or on YouTube. Follow us, like us on Facebook. I'm also on Snapchat, just my first and last name, Jason Shepard. You always get to see behind the scenes. Instagram, we're all over the place, just trying to deliver amazing aviation content to you all. We'll be at all the AOPA flying, Sun and Fun Oshkosh. We look forward to seeing you all out there. Let's, um, let's answer some questions here. Um, Derek Church, thank you, my friend. I truly, truly appreciate that. By the way, don't hesitate to you know, ask questions. We have live chat. I believe Hunter's gonna be in the live chat here later tonight. It's about 11 o'clock at night we do live chat. We do phone support. We've had students call us, Jason, my check rides tomorrow and you helped my steep turns. And over the phone, we'll send them all the videos, we'll talk to them, we'll coach you. You realize our ground school, and again, I, I, this, the goal of this isn't to be a sales pitch. The goal of this is to deliver value, but this, this is our, my passion. You know, where this isn't just here's a course, good luck. This is a flight training community. And as you see from all the great comments we have here, because everybody feels like they know everybody, because we've really created that community where every Monday night we do these webinars and we just, it, it, this is a mentorship thing. You can always call, you can always text, you can always hit the live chat, whatever it may be to reach out and ask questions. We are here for you all to deliver value. And I hope that comes across. I hope I don't come across as salesy because that's not the intention here. We're here to deliver value to you all and just be a blessing to you on your flight train journey. And I hope that shows in everything that we do. Let's again, answer some questions here. Um, all right. Uh, yes, Hunter's gonna do questions, I see that. Uh, uh, username B. Cold. do I handle rusty pilots? So we made, uh, John, do you mind grabbing? No, I got one here. We made an entire movie working with Rusty Pots. I don't personally, uh, 
it's very difficult for me to take on outside students now. The waiting list, as you can imagine, is vast. So we made an entire movie called Flying Again. I worked with eight rusty pilots on their journey back into the cockpit. Uh, Ariel Tweedo, uh, who hadn't flown three years, all the way up to a gentleman named Bill Clayton, hadn't flown 30 years. Just And their stories, their journeys back in the cockpit. Very, very neat documentary style here. Written exam study and tips, says Thomas. Thomas, I'm going to tell you what I say in the private pilot or instrument pilot boot camp. Get it scheduled. The best way to get the knowledge test done is to get it scheduled. Give yourself two weeks. Go schedule that. By the way, you're seeing the trailer flying again right now. It's playing on your screen. Get it scheduled. Go ahead and call CATS, call LaserGrade, and say, hey, this is Thomas. I need to schedule my test. I need to pay for it. Uh, I need to take it January 21st. Get it scheduled. You'll find a way to get it done then, won't you? That's how to get it done. Remember this too, I, I share this with all our online ground school members. How you prep for the knowledge test and how you prep for the check right are two different things. Don't do them so close together. Get the monkey off your back and get the knowledge test done. I want you to get it done half the time before you even start your flight training. So you can focus on the fun part, which is flying. Get the monkey off your back, get the knowledge test done. And again, we'll help you do all of that. Um, John Freeman says, is better to train on six pack or he says G500 for private pot. John, I am, I am old school, okay? Hear me out on this. John, I want everybody, I think everybody should go find the old Piper Cub, Aronica Champ, sit in the corner of a hangar and, and start tail wheel and do it that way. But again, I'm old school like that. Listen, I want you to start, start six pack. And then if you want to go glass, do that for your instrument is how I typically teach that. I want you to have a skill set to fall back on. Learn them both, but do it private for six pack. Go glass for your instrument where it's really an asset. Because think about it, when you're all glass for private, it can be a distraction, it can slow you down, it can cost you more money. Use that glass to its full advantage when you work on your instrument. That's where I, where I think that's really going to shine um, for you with that. My good friend, Jamie Beckett, thank you so much, friend, my friend. I truly appreciate it. Jamie Beckett of AOPA fame. If you've ever been to a Rusty Pot seminar in Florida, Jamie Beckett was your presenter. Awesome, awesome guy. Uh, someone asked for private pot or the oral and flight tests on the same day. They can be, um, assuming the weather's good. Um, but yes, typically they are. Uh, my check ride for CFI was not because it was a four hour oral exam, which is, that's light for a CFI oral exam. Then I was so tired after four hours of just, again, Q and A, Q and A, Q and A with no breaks. Took a break, came back the next day and did, and did the flight because it was just, it's a, it's a marathon, a, a CFI check ride for those of you coming up. Um, just trying to grab a, some more here. Um, Kyle said, how do I get ready for the oral exam and for the check ride? Again, you're, you're probably taking great strides for it now. The check ride's the scariest thing. It's what's that check ride examiner going to ask me? Well, how'd you do here tonight? You know, did you get five out of five? You're feeling pretty good. Obviously, our book, Pass Your Private Pilot Check Ride. Literally, I, I have hundreds of check ride questions that were on actual private pilot check rides. I provide the question, provide you the best answer. I also have an audio book to it as well. So you can go through and listen, immerse yourself. That's the secret to all this. For the knowledge test, for the check ride, to immerse yourself in the materials. You have to live aviation. And even after you earn the certificates, you have to continue to live it, uh, to continue to stay proficient with it here. Uh, let's read some more. Casey, I bet, my friend, that's awesome. All right, uh, just trying to find, there's just so many coming in at once. I, I apologize here. Um, reading some more. Um, awesome, awesome. Do examiners allow tablets on checklists from Jason Crow? Yeah, okay, yes, they will. Think of it this way. But they also have the right to say you're looking up everything on your iPhone, you've got ForeFlight on here, whatever it is that you're using, Garmin Pilot, iFlight Planner, doesn't matter, whatever you're using. And they're going to say, you know what, Jason, I'm so sorry, your battery just died. And they're going to take that away from you. And show me how you use a regular sectional chart. Show me how you came to this number on your flight plan. Well, ForeFlight did it for me. That answer is not going to fly very well on a check ride. So you need to know the old school methods as well. That's what you need to prepare for. So just, just think of that, be, be ready for that. Always have a backup plan 
is my point with that. Make sure you always have that backup plan. All right, let's uh, let's see some more here. Um, Yes, Dan, you do. Dan, gold members do. You should, uh, as soon as you log in, go to Ground School Academy. For those of you who've already signed up, groundschoolacademy.com forward slash gift, G-I-F-T, gift, will get you access to download all the books, and they're yours. Even after you cancel, they're still yours. Please, that's, that's my gift to you all, uh, just for being a blessing to myself and my family here. Um, let me see. Bob Cam, our resident Jacksonville Approach Controller, amazing. Controller Bob makes a few video debuts in our Oshkosh video, as well as my DME Arc video. Bob was the controller just by coincidence for that. Hunter, thank you for sharing that link. Uh, that's you have to be logged in, obviously, to access that link. Bob says, is there a point where you can prepare too much? Absolutely. There's a point you can prepare too much. Think of it this way. Go back, Bob, go back to your college days, right? You're in college, maybe we procrastinate a little bit too much, big exam tomorrow, so what do you do? You cram, you cram, you try to get it all done. Honestly, science has proven that cramming before a big test is not the best method to success. What's best actually is to have a set study plan, Bob, that says for my check rides in a month. This month, um, Monday through Friday, I'm going to go ahead and commit an hour a night. I'm gonna watch two adjacent videos. I'm gonna take a practice quiz. I'm gonna watch a mock check ride. I'm gonna go through this and that's my study plan. Great, reach out to us with questions. Take off the weekends, relax. Continue to fly twice a week. Then when you get your check rides on a Friday, it's Thursday, stop studying. Don't even think about airplanes on Thursday. Enjoy being with your family, with the kids. Then on Friday you show up with that renewed mind Good night's rest, good breakfast, and you're going to go kick butt on the check right. Absolutely, you can over-prepare. You can psych yourself out with it, too. I see students do it all the time before a solo. They psych themselves. I don't tell students when they solo anymore. Oftentimes, when they're doing well, I just say, all right, and I grab their log book, and I sign everything, and I get out of the airplane. And they look at me. I've gotten out in the middle of the runway before at a pilot-controlled airport. I had, a, I had a student, his, his logbook was already endorsed, and we were doing, he was just doing great on his landings. And he came from, um, from a flight school where his instructor kind of did everything. He was always on the pedals a little bit, always on the yoke a little bit, helping him. And every landing, he said, Jason, well, did you do anything? I said, no, Harvey, that was a great landing. He goes, no, I know you were doing something. And literally, we did six landings. Oh, I know you were touching something. I'm like, I didn't touch anything. My feet are here, flat on the floor. My hands are right here. I'd, I'd have him, I'd land like this, right? Just to prove to him, oh, I know your feet were touching something. But I said, Harvey, stop the airplane. What do you mean? I literally got out of the airplane. His logbook again was already endorsed. Everything was good. Got out of the airplane and said, it's your, I'm approved to you. I'm not doing anything. And soloed him. Again, you can overthink things. You can overprepare. You, uh, you can be your own worst enemy sometimes when it comes to aviation. But aviation can be unforgiving. There's such a difference between being a confident pilot and being a cocky pilot. How do we find that balance? I want you confident. I want you believing in yourself but not so much so that it becomes cocky. Do you understand what I mean? We have to work to solve and find that balance. Let's take maybe just one more question here, and then I've got to get back home to my family um, as well here. Let's pick one more good one. Um, Jake, uh, I could give a whole dissertation on that on Facebook. Go listen to the CFI podcast on iTunes. I have a great CFI podcast. That is like what the whole podcast is all about. He asked, do you have any advice for new CFI teaching private pilots? Uh, Man, go listen to that, because if not, I'd spend 25 minutes here talking all about it. Um, let me see. Okay, I'm going to take this last question here. Do I have any suggestions on tips for air sickness? Air sickness was Jason Shepard. I was a pri well, I was an aspiring private pilot. I hadn't even soloed yet. I specifically remember doing turns around a point. I remember getting so nauseous that I was no longer looking outside. I was looking down at my knee because it was the only thing that wasn't moving. I remember just doing turns around a point like, I don't feel very good. And my instructor had to take the controls. My lesson was about 25 minutes. And literally, my flight lessons, my first few flight lessons were about 25 minutes. No exaggeration. That includes taxi and everything else and run up. And then they became 30 minutes, and then became 45 minutes. I just built up a tolerance to it. I had such a passion. I thought I was not going to be, I never actually vomited, but I would just become so nauseous. Um, but eventually worked and just kind of built up a tolerance. But it, I did it not by flying once a month, not by flying once a week. I was taking three lessons a week. 
they were only 25 minute lessons, but I was working to build up a tolerance with that. And that's just kind of how it works. It, it will come to you in time. Uh, Chad said, can you talk about the gift of your books? Yes, so if you become an online ground school member at any level, from Pilots Inner Circle, PIC at $27 a month, all the way up to a gold level at $147 a month, it's month to month, but a member at any level, you get all of our books for free. Um, you get, we do the Monday night webinars, everything else, a lot, a lot of great stuff. Groundschoolacademy.com to sign up. And once you're signed up, go to groundschoolacademy.com. You gotta be logged in forward slash gift to download all those books. And then you'll get in the course. You can go in there, you can check out the Knowledge Test Prep Boot Camp. You can check out the Checkride Prep. It's a full online, by the way, let me mention this and I'm gonna wrap this up. You become a member, you get access to all our courses. It's not, you just, you don't just buy Private Pilot. You don't just buy Instrument Pilot. When you become a member, you get access to Private, to Instrument, to Commercial, to our Fundamentals of Instruction to our soon to be multi courses and soon to be G1000 and all these, as we add more and more courses and more and more content, your one membership gets access to all of that. So do, do check that out, groundschoolacademy.com to learn more. But listen, I'm gonna let you get back to enjoying your night. If you have any questions, Hunter is going to be on the live chat. Uh, Matt, Ethan, those of you who are also out there, maybe if you don't mind backing him up on live chat because I imagine he's very, very busy after this. Um, Thank you so much. Don't hesitate to reach out to us. You have the office number. You can hit live chat on m0a.com or groundschoolacademy.com if you need help with anything. Thank you. Thank you so much for being such a blessing to myself, to my beautiful wife, Ashley, to our gorgeous kids, to just this great team here at m0a.com. You really are the reason we get up so early, stay up so late, and do all these crazy things we do while we do it for you all. We do it to help make you safer, smarter pilots. If there is anything, anything at all, myself or a great team member here at m0a.com can do this week, this year, to make you a safer, smarter pilot, please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out. Enjoy the rest of your night, and most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great night, guys. We'll see ya.